Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Dante and Sam went to Sonny's penthouse to share their grief about Spencer. Sam shortly left to see Alexis. When Sonny and Dante were alone, Dante suspected that Sonny was keeping something hidden. Sonny revealed that someone attempted to eliminate him while he was on his private island in Puerto Rico. Dante asked Sonny for more information regarding the attempted shooting. When Dante inquired if Sonny thought the shooting was an inside job, he admitted that he assumed it was by someone in his group. Dante suggested interviewing everyone close to Sonny. Regardless of how much it hurts, everyone is guilty, until proven otherwise, Dante stated. Sonny thanked Dante for his offer and stated that he knew he could trust him. Dante just got a call from Laura. After Dante left, Sonny called someone and said he needed to see them as soon as possible. Sam joined Alexis at the Invader, who was saddened to be writing Spencer's obituary. Sam fondly remembered Spencer having a lot of flair. Alexis trembled at the prospect of speaking about Spencer in the past tense. She and Sam went on to relate their favorite Spencer memories, such as when he wore a Phantom of the Opera mask to the nurse's ball years ago. Alexis approached Sam for help with Spencer's obituary. Sam pushed Alexis to concentrate on Spencer's fondness for drama, jokes, and plans. You know, Spencer was acting shallow and pampered when he was little. He was just pretending. It was not real. He was only guarded. He was afraid, and he had every reason to be. But as he grew older, he opened up and let us see who he truly was. And he was a gift, Alexis murmured lovingly as Sam smiled lightly. Sam listened as Alexis read Spencer's obituary aloud. His legacy will be the Spencer Cassadine Drama Fund, which teaches theatre, particularly Shakespearean classics, to prisoners, impoverished communities and children. To quote his favourite bardic work, now cracks a noble heart, Alexis remarked, her voice breaking. Alexis continued, Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels serenade thee to thy rest, Alexis said as she sobbed hysterically. Sam gently put her arms around Alexis's shoulders. At the home and heart studios, Scott recalled comforting Lucy at Metro Court a few nights ago. Scott questioned whether Martin was actually deserving of Lucy's affection, adding that all he wanted was for Lucy to be happy. Lucy begged Scott to stay still while she looked for Martin. Tracy attempted to persuade Martin in Metro Court that Lucy was having an affair with Scott. Tracy stated that Scott and Lucy could never stay away from one another. When Lucy encountered Martin at the pub, he mentioned that Lucy had asked Scott to console her after she learned Bobby had died. Lucy said that she, Scott, and Bobby had a troubled history together. Martin remained unimpressed, claiming that Lucy's desire to turn to Scott revealed something about her and Martin's relationship. Lucy stated that Bobby's death had unexpected consequences for her. Martin revealed that he and Lucy were no longer working as a pair. Martin also stated that whatever Scott and Lucy had for each other outweighed anything she had with Martin. Martin rose up and said farewell to Lucy, who quickly raced out of the room in tears. Gregory and Tracy sat down at an adjacent table to discuss Spencer's death. Tracy was silent and mournful, saying just that it was a tragedy. Gregory got a call from his doctor and stood up to depart. Tracy then approached Martin, explaining that she owed him the truth about something. Lucy fell down in tears as she told Scott at home and heart that Martin had ended their relationship. Scott wrapped his arms around Lucy while she sobbed. Lucy claimed she had sabotaged every relationship she had been in. Scott stated that he would not allow Lucy to beat herself up. If Martin is too ignorant to realize how great you are, then screw him. You are Lucy Co. Scott exclaimed, Lucy Co. The best there is, as he and Lucy stood face to face. Scott and Lucy kissed. In a hotel room, Anna introduced Jordan to Jagger Cates. Anna recounted to Jordan how she knew Jagger, who stated that he was the special agent in charge of the investigation into who was selling stolen WSB weapons in Port Charles. 
Jagger claimed that Anna and Jordan were interfering with his investigation and ordered them to stop exploring the case. Jagger went on to say that Curtis shooting months earlier was part of something far broader, and that the rifle used in the shooting was part of a cache of guns used in other shootings across the United States. Anna said that Jagger was hiding information, and she requested him to include her and Jordan in his probe. We can work together, Anna suggested. Jagger discovered in a phone conversation that O'Neill, the gun runner Anna and Jordan were supposed to question, was refusing to cooperate with the FBI. Jagger quickly saw that Anna had acquired something useful from O'Neill. Anna offered that she and Jordan combine their information with Jagger's. Anna went on to say that she and Jordan suspected Sonny was the original target of the Metro Court shooting the previous summer. Jagger became enraged at the mention of Sonny's name. Jagger claimed that Sonny should have been imprisoned years ago and that he just cared about himself. Anna stated that Sonny had changed and she encouraged Jagger to continue working with her and Jordan. Jagger stunned Anna and Jordan when he announced that they would be arrested for hindering a federal investigation. Laura was overjoyed as she opened the door to Nicholas and Ace in Laura and Kevin's penthouse. When Laura announced Spencer's death, Nicholas' eyes filled with sorrow. When Nicholas discovered that Esen had followed Spencer and Trina to Paris, he blamed himself for Spencer's death. My son is dead because of me, Nicholas sobbed. Laura requested Nicholas to join her on the couch after she had put Ace down for his nap. Laura went on to assure Nicholas that he was not responsible for Spencer's death. Nicholas continued to blame himself, claiming that he had put Spencer in Essen's path. Laura pledged to always adore Nicholas. Laura noted that Nicholas had done the right thing by returning to Port Charles, but she immediately deduced that he did not intend to stay there. When Nicholas validated Laura's suspicions, she exclaimed that Ace would be better off without him. Stung by Laura's words, Nicholas revealed his role in Spencer's death. My stealing Ace was not the only factor that contributed to Spencer's death. The loneliness that made him vulnerable to Esme in the first place allowed him and all of you to believe I was dead. What kind of father does that to his son? Nicholas inquired before concluding that Ace was better off without him. Nicholas became animated when he stated that he intended to leave Ace with Laura and Kevin. Nicholas reasoned that Laura and Kevin could give Ace a better life than he could. Laura begged with Nicholas to face his mistakes and accept responsibility. Laura hugged Nicholas, who sobbed softly in her arms. Shortly after Laura contacted Dante, Nicholas agreed to accompany him to the police station. Nicholas told Ace before he departed that he loved him. Laura mentioned that she would meet Nicholas at the police station. Thank you for everything, mother. I want you to know that I am doing this for you, Ace and Spencer. Nicholas added, I want to be someone you can all be proud of, as Dante carefully walked him out of the penthouse in handcuffs. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.